Alrighty guys, welcome to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and like to see more travel related content. Today we are going to talk about all inclusive packing. So you're going to an all inclusive resort. What do you need to take? What don't you need to take? We're gonna go over all of it today. Stick around. My name is B, that's B-E-A. I own two travel agencies, BMA's Travel and BMA's Weddings. We specialize in family trips, group vacations, uh, destination weddings, and of course honeymoons, romantic travel as well. Um, a lot of my clients are booking all-inclusive resorts. So with booking all-inclusive resorts, obviously you wanna know what to pack. Um, so I'm gonna go over a list today of the things that I typically pack when I'm going to an all-inclusive resort and things that you really don't need to pack but some people still you know, may wanna have around. So we're gonna go over all the items on that list. Um, I'm not being sponsored or supported by any of the products that I show today. These are all items that I personally use um, and can you know, attest to them and stand behind them. So we're also one, running a monthly giveaway in the month of January. Head over to Be Amazed, that's B-E-A, Amazed Travel.com slash monthly dash contest. Enter to win our monthly contest. It's going to be a basket full of all the goodies I'm going to talk about today. Um, and then some extra stuff as well, along with a $100 gift card to our agency for your next week long all inclusive vacation. Um, so let's get started. Number one, let's talk about your travel documents. So these are, you know, a lot of plane tickets aren't ticketed anymore, typically. Um, but if they are, you know, you can have your plane tickets. Um, we're talking about, you know, downloading confirmation numbers, um, items such as your confirmation from the resort, your travel documents for the transfers from the airport to the resort, also your excursion vouchers if you pre-purchase your excursion. Um, we're gonna go over in a couple weeks how to choose the right excursion for your family. Um, so stick around for that video as well. Um, we're also talking about passports. So important, don't forget your passports. Um, there's so many things that as agents, you know, we can, we can fix if you're in transit. Passports is not one of them. So first priority before you even pack your clothes, make sure you have that passport. Um, we'll go over passports some other time. Also take a quick look and make sure that your passport doesn't expire within six months of your trip. So for example, if you're leaving in July, make sure that it expires at least January of the next year. Uh, but we'll talk about that some other time. Also, you wanna include some cash, so small bills. Um, this is gonna be for tipping, whether you're tipping your transfer driver um, or even the people at the resort that are dealing uh, with you directly providing you that service. So we're gonna talk about tipping also in a couple weeks, so stick around. Make sure, once again, you subscribe to the channel so you can catch up on that video also. Next item, let's talk about the sun protection. So. Most all-inclusives that our clients visit are in Mexico, they're in the Caribbean, um, Central America as well. Those places, the sun is more intense, guys. I don't care if you have the best base tan in the world, you have to pack stronger sunscreen than you would wear at home. So just for example, I am one of the palest people I know, and I will wear anywhere between 50 and 100. I still tan, I still tan, but I don't burn. So you're gonna wanna take, I recommend one bottle of lotion or spray, whichever you prefer, at at least 50 SPF for every person for every four days. So for example, if you and your husband are going to, let's say the Riviera Maya, you're both going there, you're going for a week. So I would pack four bottles of sunscreen at that point, one for each of you for every four days. Uh, don't also forget the aloe vera. So the aloe vera to you know take away your your sun um, your suntan so that you're not burning. Sunburns are so painful. Um, you don't want to be caught without that. I actually have this product here that I wanted to show you guys. Um, it's from Bath and Body Works. It's a 24-hour moisture ultra shea body cream. 
So I like this product a lot. Um, it comes in a bunch of different scents. This one is Fresh Coconut Colada. The 24 hour moisture ultra shea body cream seems to work better for me than the sloppy green aloe vera gel um, that we've all been using for ages. So pack that sunscreen, pack the al aloe vera as well, um, and then also consider packing a rash guard. So rash guard shirts are awesome, um, especially if you have problems with being very pale or light skin like myself. Um, rash guard shirts actually make you feel cooler than if you didn't have them on. So um, they protect your body from you know sun exposure as well and getting extra burnt. So consider a rash guard as well. And don't forget the chapstick. So your lips are important as well. Uh, make sure you're using some kind of SPF chapstick if you're going to hang out by the pool. Next item, let's talk about bug spray. So Bugs in the Caribbean, bugs in Mexico. Um, it's a warm area, so Central America as well. You want to have bug spray. So some kind of bug spray, whether it be you know natural bug spray, um, whether it be those uh, wristbands that you can get as well that deter the bugs. Make sure you have some kind of repellent to help you against the bugs. I'll be honest, in the times that, you know, we have visited the Caribbean, Central America, Mexico, you know, we have never had a crazy problem with bugs. However, there have been times where, you know, there's been like little flies or, you know, something like that, that we've been very grateful to have that bug spray. So, you know, something that you may want to consider bringing as well. Next, we're going to talk about metal straws. So I have a couple of these. Um, they're little bags. They come with the metal straws when you buy them. Um, this is what they look like, little metal straws. So I recommend you bring metal straws because most of the all-inclusive resorts that we're sending people to have banned regular straws. So this is because of trying to preserve marine life, the oceans. It's a great idea, uh, but sometimes you just want a straw. So they don't discourage you from using metal straws. It's something reusable that you know you can use over and over again. Um, and it also fits, make sure you have a insulated mug. So I have this super cool Disney one, Disney Addict. Um, but what I like about this one is it has a collapsible lid here, but it also has a hole that you can stick your straw in and it's perfect. Um, so a lot of the bartenders uh, will actually mix your frozen drink and put it into the insulated mug. So that's really helpful because you wouldn't believe how fast your drink is going to melt, how fast it's going to get warm, and you're also drinking out of your own cup, plus you're not reusing, constantly using those plastic cups over and over again, causing more waste for the environment, so on and so forth. So most of the places that we send our clients to are insulated mug friendly. However, there are some that are not, so make sure you're finding out if the resort you're visiting is allowing the insulated travel mugs. Um, if they are not, then, you know, you could still bring a metal straw. There's nothing to say that you can. Next item we're going to talk about is a pool float. So most of the places that we're sending people to, once again, they don't have, you know, the pool floats. A lot of our clients will say, you know, when they got there, oh, hey, you know, we went to the gift shop, we bought a pool float. But keep in mind, a lot of items at the gift shop are going to be more expensive than items that you're going to be able to get here at home. So if you feel like you're going to want to float around in the pool on some kind of float, I recommend you go to the dollar store, go to, you know, whatever superstore you want to around and purchase yourself one before you leave. Most of the times it's going to be more cost effective to do so. Uh, next thing don't forget is your sunglasses. So sunglasses are so essential as well for obvious reasons, um, but it's just something that sometimes, you know, we overlook, we, it's an afterthought, uh, but make sure that you pack them. Definitely needed when you're going to an all-inclusive resort. Um, the next item I wanna show you guys is going to be a beach bag. So I recommend packing a beach bag, at least one bag. I actually, I'll confess, I pack two. Um, I have this one, it is from the Aloha brand. It's actually made of all recycled materials. Um, here it is. I like this one because it's actually um, like water repellent. So if you're by the pool or if you're, you know, putting wet towels in it, something like that, it's not going to make the bag wet. So I really like this guy. It also has the zipper. A lot of beach bags, especially the tote style like this, 
don't come with a zipper. Um, and I like this guy too, in case you have a room key or something else, you can you know put it in there as well. The other beach bag that I have, I got this one when I was in Mexico, I actually forgot my beach bag. Um, and it's turned out to be one of my favorites. It's this little backpack. Um, it's all like knit, it's woven. Um, it has a little front pocket here, you can see. And it also has a giant inside. So this has been great. It will fit two pool towels in it. Um, I've also fit my snorkeling gear in it as well. And you can you keep your phone in here or something like that if you're decided to be in the water. I like this one because you know you can use it as a pool bag, but you can also use this when you're going out on excursions. And the straps are not like traditional backpack straps where they like cut into your shoulders. So I like this bag, multifaceted bag, uh, very useful when traveling. So get yourself something like this. Um, and you don't have to carry two beach bags. Uh, one beach bag is, you know, sufficient. I just like two because I like them both. All right, the next item on the list is going to be a underwater cell phone bag. So this is called a sea wag um, I actually bought this when we were at Secrets Aquamall, I believe. Um, so super cool bag. It actually has little clips on the top of it. If I can open it here, just like this, you can open it up and you can put your cell phone in there. I'll actually show you right now, put your cell phone in there and then it locks shut so that you can actually take this guy out into the ocean as you're snorkeling and capture your video. So just like that. I love this little bag. I use this bag often when we go away. Um, and sometimes I actually put my phone in this bag. Even if I'm just hanging by the pool, I'm so afraid I'm gonna drop my phone in the pool. Um, so this has become really handy for me. You can buy this guy online. Uh, the name is Seawag, S-E-A-W-A-G. Uh, there's other brands out there as well that my friends have used. I just happen to like this one. Um, next item that you want to bring is some kind of entertainment. So entertainment for your plane, your plane ride, entertainment for while you're in the resort, whether that be crossword puzzles, um, your Amazon Kindle, your iPad, um, even if you want to use your phone, make sure you have some kind of entertainment for those down moments while you're relaxing and you just want something to tinker around with and do. Um, we'll talk about what to pack in your carry-on bag some other day, um, but these are items, the entertainment that I usually pack in my carry-on and then I use throughout the trip as well. Next item we'll talk about is a sewing kit. So I know it sounds silly, but there are so many times that we take brand new clothing and then we're ripping the tags off, right? And we end up getting holes in our clothes. So make sure you take that little sewing kit. Uh, I have just a little tiny one that I keep in my bag. I've only used it once or twice, but the couple times that I have used it, I've been really, really glad that I've had it. Uh, next thing that I always make sure that I pack are resealable bags. So like your Ziploc type bags, um, just kitchen resealable bags. I use these so often when we're traveling, I'm always make sure that I have at least three with me. I always put my hygiene products inside the bag. Um, I'll seal the bag off before we go. There have been times, you know, through flights or through transfers to and from the resort that our uh, products have burst open. I've been so grateful that having them in that resealable plastic bag because they don't get all over your clothes then. Um, I also use them for, you're gonna laugh, but sometimes excursions don't provide you with food or they'll provide you with food and you're just not sure, you know, if you're in a foreign country, you're gonna like the food or not. So sometimes I'll actually take some food from the buffet, put them in the Ziploc bag, and then you can take them with you to the excursion. So, you know, whether you have some muffins, something like that, just to hold you over until you came back to the resort where your food and your drinks and everything else is included. Um, and you can make sure that you actually have food available to you that you like. So I also pack snacks, um, kind of going on that. I usually pack, you know, some peanuts or some crackers, um, gummy bears, Twizzlers, they're always a good one too. Um, I always pack goldfish, uh, like Pepperidge Farm goldfish. <laughs> it's one of my guilty pleasures while traveling. Um, but I like to have these things around because you never know when you're traveling or you know, you're know you getting ready to go to dinner or you just want that tiny little snack to hold you over. So I always make sure that I pack those snacks. Um, 
Don't forget to pack headphones also. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have one pair of headphones for every person in your party. I also pack a backup. So my husband and I typically travel together. I always make sure I have three pairs of headphones. So when we travel, there are these little infotainment systems oftentimes in the back of the seat in front of you. So you can use that to watch TV, you can watch movies, um, listen to music, stuff like that. The headphones on the airlines, most of them are not complimentary anymore. So you want to make sure that you carry at least one that is not one pair of headphones that is not Bluetooth enabled, that has a little plug, um, the tiny little AUX plug that can go into the screen in front of you um, or into the armrest, whichever the particular plane has. So you can hear what's going on on the screen. Um, a lot of times, you know, we ended up taking our wireless headphones and there were a couple times where we couldn't hook the wireless headphones up to the TV. So we ended up listening to our own music in our ears, but watching a movie in front of us. So make sure that you pack those as well. Um, that kind of goes into the next topic, which is your chargers. So make sure you're taking at least one charger for every device that you have. I always bring an extra cell phone charger as well. Um, you never know when your charger is going to break, um, something like that. So make sure that you have those chargers. Uh, also, you know, obviously I didn't cover clothing. I didn't cover hygiene products, um, you know, your deodorants, your shampoos, stuff like that. The resort will have uh, little sample size stuff, like every hotel does. Uh, your shampoo, your conditioner, your lotion, um, your bar soap, sometimes shower gel as well. So they'll have those items, but I personally, I like the comforts of using the items that you know I have here at home to use. So I usually buy you know tiny little travel size containers. I put these items in my checked luggage, guys. So I'm not talking about in your regular suitcase. I'm talking about in that, or I'm sorry, in your uh, carry-on bag. I do not put these items in my carry-on. I put them in my checked bag. So one question that a lot of my clients ask me, what size products can I take? We're talking today only about what you can pack in your checked luggage. So that's when you get to the airport, um, you pay you know, the extra money to have the checked bags, or if you're with Southwest, you know, sometimes they're included as well. But these bags that we're talking about today are what goes like underneath the airplane, okay? So not a carry-on bag that you're putting in the overhead compartment. Um, these, when you're packing your checked bag, it doesn't matter what size you're using. So if you wanted to bring a full size bottle of shampoo, you can do so, uh, full size conditioner, something like that. Once again, I recommend putting it in that resealable plastic bag just to make sure that you know it doesn't spill all over your clothing. But when we're talking about check bags, once again, there's no restriction on size of the item. Um, when we're talking about the carry-ons, we'll go over that some other day, you wanna make sure that you're doing the exact size that you're allowed or less than that. You know, and finally, let's talk about clothing. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you pack enough swimsuits. Uh, most of your time at the all-inclusive resort is going to be spent you know, by the beach, by the pool, uh, relaxing in the sun. So swimsuits are going to be a must, a priority. Um, I also pack tank tops, shorts. Um, I go to the gym when I'm on vacation, so I pack gym clothes as well. And don't forget, you know, just to pack some like t-shirts and stuff like that for going on those excursions. You're gonna want something, you know, that you can maybe put over top of your bathing suit. So include a cover up in there and make sure that before you go, you are researching what the dress code is at the resort you're traveling to. So dress codes vary by resort. Mostly this is important for guys. Girls typically wear a sundress at night, um, you know, a cute tank top and you know, maybe a skirt, something like that. Guys, you have to make sure that you're packing with what you're allowed to wear. There are all-inclusive resorts out there that will not let you wear golf shorts to dinner. You have to wear a pair of long pants. Uh, whether that be a you know light pair of dress pants or whether that's a pair of jeans, something like that. Um, they also have restrictions at some resorts where guys cannot wear open-toed shoes to dinner. So you can't just throw on your flip-flops to go to dinner with your dress pants. Make sure you're researching this before you pack so that you can figure out what you need to have in order to attend all of your dinners. Uh, let's talk about one more thing. 
I love these little mini bottles of Febreze. This guy is 2.8 ounces. This is something you could put in your carry-on if you wanted to. Um, I don't. I put it in my check bag. I put almost everything in my check bag, to be honest. Um, I know, you know, people like to use that carry-on kind of as a backup if your luggage gets lost. That's fantastic. Uh, maybe I live on the edge, um, but I prefer to put my items in my check bag. So this little Febreze guy, I like him because, you know, you put your items in your suitcase, everything is, you know, condensed, collapsed all together. It's kind of nice just to freshen your clothing after you get to your destination. It's also nice because some of the rooms have this, um, a light musty scent to them. It's part of traveling to the Caribbean. There's so much moisture in the air. Guys, the resorts cannot control this. So just something to keep in mind if you get there, you know, have these little bottles around. They're so helpful. Let's talk about items that you do not need to pack. These are items that you can pack if you want, but you do not need them. Um, I don't recommend taking them. Number one is gonna be beach towels. So the resorts, the all-inclusive resorts that you know we're sending our clients to have towels there. I don't ever take a beach towel with me when we go. Um, however, you know, sometimes if you wanted to take a beach towel, it wouldn't hurt you to take it. Um, you know, in circumstances where you're going during peak season, you may want to consider that because the availability of the towels at the pool might be less. So it might help you at that point, you know, to take those extra pool towels. Um, the next item I do not recommend taking, I, guys, these are so cute, but they serve no purpose at an all-inclusive resort. I'm talking about these tiny little, I wish I had one to show you, these tiny little inflatable drink holders. Um, so they're like, you know, yay big, and they have a little hole in the middle that you can set your drink. These don't fit in there. They don't. So, you know, if you wanted to carry like the regular plastic cups that they're giving you, okay, maybe, but every little move of the water, you know, the water's gonna move. Like when people get in and out, they, they turn over, they spill. They are completely worthless to me. So I do not recommend them. I know they're cute. They come in donuts, they come in flamingos, unicorns, super cute product. I find no use for them. Um, so save your time, save your money. Speaking of money, don't take expensive items with you. Um, I recommend, you know, with your jewelry and stuff, ladies, talk to, you know, talk to your local jewelry, your local jewelry girl who's selling paparazzi, um, something like that. Those $5 earrings, if you lose those, it doesn't matter. Don't take your diamond rings. Um, you know, if you want to take your wedding ring, that's one thing. Don't take a lot of excessive jewelry. Don't take a lot of, you know, excessive electronics. If you do have to take those items, make sure you're utilizing the in-room safe. Um, so we're gonna talk about some more all-inclusive tips on another video, I believe it's next week. Um, but we're gonna talk about that as well. So we're gonna cover, you know, why to use the room safe, but make sure if you're taking anything expensive that you're taking advantage of that item in your room that's safe. Um, also cash. So I recommend, you know, you're taking smaller bills for tips but don't take an excessive amount of cash. Guys, there's really no reason to take more than $1,000. Even $1,000 is a lot of money to take. So I recommend you take one major credit card, um, maybe two if you want, one for each of you and your party. After that though, you know, just some small bills for tipping. You don't wanna take something, you know, if you lose $1,000, yeah, that really sucks, but it doesn't suck as much as if you took $3,000 with you. Um, so also a side note on the credit cards, make sure you're calling your credit card company before you travel, just to let them know, you know, hey, I'm traveling to avoid any foreign transaction fees. Also, um, some credit cards have foreign transaction fees, some don't. Also something you might want to look forward to or look into before you go on your trip. So that's all that I have today. Um, there's also a packing list on our website. I'm going to leave the link in the comment section. So make sure you check that out. You can print that off before you go and make sure that you have everything there as well. So thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.